Hello everyone and welcome back. So I thought before we actually dive in into the major business which is to create the front end for our chat app, we should actually explore React a little bit. So currently what we've done so far is just to introduce what React is and the way to create a component. So what I'm actually suggesting is we can just quickly have a simple flow for implementing a calculator. A simple calculator just to add two numbers together and with this we can try to explore some of the other things we had as to offer us okay so let's dive in into that and quickly implement that and from there we can move on to the next phase which is to set up our socket service all right so let's get started okay so one of the things I would like to ship in is the fact that we have something called ES syntax and yeah, we have it as ES6 and ES7 already. And about that, we, we tend to change our snippet a little bit. So currently we have function, app and this. So we want to create the same thing, but using a much more, let's say, appealing method. Because I'm pretty sure most of us are already used to creating a variable. So you define your variable const, then the variable name. So we are going to follow with that as well. So const app, then we want to make this app a function. So what we want to do here is we want to say is equals to a function, which reference using an arrow. So a function is, you can represent a function by this major part. So the open and close brackets a forward arrow so equals to then greater than then the open and close brace so you want to identify a function with that then this is equals to your variable so this is defined as const because it literally won't change in most cases it's not as if you can't define it as let as well it's going to work but you get the point and what you want to just do here is to return what you have here which is return a and b okay return this which is this so if we run the server we should still get the same results which we have here so i'm introducing this because this is what you will see often because i'm kind of just prone to using this so let's abide by that so from here on so we want to start exploring some of the things we want to have for our calculator so we want to have an input two inputs so the one first one to have our first value and second one to have a second value then we want to have a button that has the two together so react has something called state so formally when react was starting up we have something called class based components what we currently have here is a function based component and then we have our states defined within that class however as react has updated a lot of things have changed and we are not really going to explore the class base i really don't see any reason why we want to do that so as a result we have new introduction to how to manage state content okay so to do that you want to also import something from react so this import is a bit different so for instance as we can see we imported react as a whole directly from react however the other import we want to have here like use states is more like a partial import not really partial but not complete like we are for react and the reason is that react was exported with a default so which mean is the main content that was exported from that module however the use state was exported with something like this so if you export this as this then you need to update your index so if i save this now and go back to the browser we should have, have an error however if we go back to the index and we change the way we imported uh, app to this so this should fix that and if we go back to the browser we should get our result back so that's just the different ways of exporting so when you export with defaults it means you are literally exporting the whole module and you can just use a name to reference that it doesn't have to be app it doesn't so for instance if we change this to bap and we replace this to bap it should work however since we didn't export a default then we have to return this back so if we go back to our browser now we still see it work okay 
So take note of that. So let's return everything back to it the way it is. So the reason why you want to just maintain the same name is because you want everything to be straightforward. You don't want to complicate anything. So let's save this and have this back as it is. So we've seen the two ways we can export and import. So this shouldn't be a funny deal or a com complication to us now. So now we are importing use state. So use state is known as something called hooks. So this is a sample of React hooks. So you probably have seen that a lot of time. So we have other hooks like that. So hooks are like things we can use to make connections with our function components. So we have, we also have use effect. We have use content. We are going to use all those. So we are going to use all those later on. So the first thing we want to do with use state is since we're adding two numbers together, we want to define the two variable. So we want to define them as a constant. So the way you state actually works is you define a constant that goes within an array. Okay. So the first part of the array is the constant itself. So this one, I'll call it var he. So that's the constant itself, the variable itself. Then the second part is the setter for that variable. So something you are going to use to update the value of this variable. Okay. Because React kinds of updates immediately. So as soon as you update your content, it changes. So that changes is handled by this set variable. So when you're coming from the normal JavaScript, you need to get your content, then push to document or so, so, so. All those has been abstracted already so you just need a flow to handle your changes so the next thing you want to have here is you want to say it equals to use state then within your use state you want to have an initial value so for instance when you define a variable let's say let variable a equals to empty string so you are initializing a you can also have the same thing for use state here so i just give the initial value as an empty string so that's for variable A. So let's define the second variable and I'll call this variable B. And the same thing here too. We initialize it to use an empty string. So let's update our, our UI a little bit. So instead of the H2, so let's have it within our branch, which is just div. So every other thing stays here. So let's have our first input. So this is an input. So how do we now fill all this value into it? So remember, input has a, an attribute called value, which is this. So all you just want to do is you want to make it equals to, then make sure this is within a brace. This is how you put variable information within your HTML contents in React. So here we want to set the input value to a variable content. So that's why it has to be a brace. So without put the variable a into it, then after putting the variable a, we want to have like whenever we change the input content, then we want to update our variable a. So remember, input has an attribute called unchange. So I'm pretty sure we are used to having the c as small letter. However, all those information, so most especially things that are two words joined together are kind of camel cased so the first part are lower case while the the start of the second part becomes a capital letter so this unchange returns an event so the event contains the value that changes and things like that so let's actually explore this so if we get the event then that's a function so it's a function then we get the event so we should be aware of this arrow already so inside that function, we want to log that event. Console log the event. All right. So if we go back to our browser, we should see something different. So we have this input value now. So if we inspect this page, if we go to console. All right. So if we start typing now, we should see some information here. So this information does not really make any sense because we are just printing out the input elements so this is the information about the input element so to get more information about what we are actually typing in we can now access that with e.target then either value or name so let's just use e.target so that we can get more information 
So as I've saved, the whole entity I've reloaded. So let's type in now. As we can see, we have input value, input value, input value. So the final thing we actually need from here is the value. So we can say e dot target dot value. So now let's go back. Let's input again. So as you can see, we get to see what we type in. However, you realize by now that everything we type in does not show here. And that's because we already defined a value which currently now is empty and we are really trying not changing it. So the only way this input will get updated is if we are actually changing this value. So to do that, since we have access to the value here, all we can just do is to use the set variable A we defined above. So we we'll now set that as e.target.value. We already were able to explore the content of the value itself, so we can just do that. And now if we go back to check this out, we don't need to see the console because we are not printing anything out. So if we type, as you can see, we get our content here. That's how straightforward it is. I actually believe it's straightforward. So the next thing we want to have here is the second value. So let's just double that and update as we should. So we want to change this to variable B. Then this would change to set variable B. So now we have two inputs. So if we type here, we get to see our content. And if we type here also, we get to see our content. So the last thing we want to do is we want to create a different component that we output our results. So the reason this is really not necessary, we don't have so much to create a separate component, but we've already talked about states. So I want to also introduce a concept called props. So let's, let's create the component. So it's also a function. You can just come down here and I'll create const result. Remember, it's a component, so it has to start with a capital letter, then this. So in this case, this one is going to take something called props. We are going to talk about that soon. And what we want to do here is just add values together. So we have the result and stuff. So what we need here is we want to also define a variable. So initially, when we are started off, you can't create a state within a function like this. It has to be a class. But now since we have React hooks, we can just do that. So here we want to create a variable like we did here and we want to call this results. And also it's going to initialize to results and we want to define a set result. All right, that's defined. So what we want to actually do here is to have a add button and to show the results. So let's return a div. So this branch is going to hold the results and I'll just add the result within an H3 tag. Also, remember I mentioned that you can out, you need to put your variable within a brace to show it within your HTML contents. So let's add the brace and specify results here. So now this will currently not show because we've not imported it to the app file itself. So since both of them are within the same module, the same file, we really don't need to export anything. All we can do here is we can just say results as a component now how does how do we introduce props to this so because currently result doesn't even have any knowledge of your variables variable a variable it doesn't have the knowledge so what we can do here is we can say variable a or whichever name you want to name it is equals to the real variable a so uh, let me just call this va so this is what the result component will see it as. However, I'm passing the information in VA to result. Then also let's have VB, which is variable B. All right, so these are the contents here. And you can access those information within props now. So if I come down to the result side and I print out props.va or vb then we should see the information actually let's do that so let's create a button so remember as we have the unchange function that references a function here we also have the onclick here as well so onclick so onclick returns an event but the event it returns is not really something we need we don't need any information from the event 
so we can decide to ignore it and just pull into our function here or you can put it there it doesn't really do anything but since you are not using it i guess you just want to ignore it so now we want to console log props so that we see what is within props so if we go back to our browser we should see result then calculate so we need to pull up our console again so if we currently click calculate we won't see anything oh okay we use just console it should be console log so console.log right so let's test that again so if we click calculate now we actually don't see anything as you can see we only have va as empty string then vb as empty string however if we update this now so let's say 67 and 52 so if we calculate again then we now have all those information as we can see so that's literally it so that's how props work so props is like you passing a parameter to a function but this time you are passing a parameter to a component and this is the way you pass the parameter so now when we click on calculate we want to convert our content to an integer of float so i will recommend a float then we want to sum it up and update the results so again since we are going to be working with number let's just change the input type to number so again we are using a string here because number is not a variable so we can just do that so we change both inputs to number now since we have access to both variable so what we want to do here is we want to have a temporary variable which is results or let's say rest which is equals to float or rather pass float into props dot so props is an object in this case and it has key of va and vb which is equals to variable a and variable b respectively so let's just have va which is so we've passed this to a float then we want to add this to the second float so pass float props dot variable b so this should get our summation so the next thing we want to do is we want to set the result to rest okay and that's all we need to do to have our implementation in place so let's go back to it so i'm pretty sure if we try to calculate now we might get an error we really as we can see not a number because we currently have string values at those points but now if we put in values so 67 28 and calculate we get our results we can always do that so 58 106 and we click calculate we get our results and that's literally what we'll be exploring here we can do so much with react so from the next episode we will start exploring our chat app and so yeah, that's it. I'll see you there. Bye.